everybody. Um, I hope you have popcorn ready. Today in Women's 18th of Load, and we are diving into the 1975 movie, The Step for Wives. And the similarities that we have with some TikTokers, trads out here. And the movie is about Walter and Johanna Everhart. And their two kids who move out of the city to the suburbs in a city called Stepford. And things seem a little bit strange right out the bat when the neighbors brings over a hot dish. Are you ready? I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way. Cause you try to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to gray As you fade away, yeah, 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 yeah. As you fade away, yeah, 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 yeah. Hello! How are you uh, with me? I have uh, two lovely ladies. Uh, I have Helen and Stephanie. Thank you so much for being here with me. Oh, sorry. My <laughs> cat um, decided to be a little disaster demon. I apologize. Give me one moment. Hi, Internet. <laughs> and the cat. We always bring the cat. Gotta have always the been the cat, yeah. She was like, oh, mom, I want to go in the window. Oh, you're in the middle of something. Well, too bad. <laughs> yeah, that must, must be the Stepford cat. It's the Stepford cat, yeah. She has an ancient <laughs> in chaos. <laughs> yeah, and are you familiar with the movie, with the Stepford Wives? I I seen the, the version that they have in the, in the 90s, I think, with Nicole Kidman. That was the one I saw. This one seems like a little bit more um, eerie, to say the least. Like, it seems a little bit creepy, and I, I kind of like it. But it's, it's also is very scary how uh, some people thought that they just saw that and say, oh, that looks like a great way of living. <laughs> well, like a lot of films, you know, I was in 1975. How old was I? My goodness, I was. Uh, uh, I was like 21 in 1975 or something like mm -hmm. that. And a lot of the films of those days were basically uh, we looked at the stereotypes we grew up with and had spent a decade throwing away and then we started seeing movies being made about those silly old stereotypes and weren't they crazy and we we don't have to be that way anymore we don't really have to fit in quite that way we don't have to believe in all of these crazy myths think back of think back think blazing saddles you know think young frankenstein think think you know, films being made about, well, I'm thinking, well, this is a 60s film, Five Easy Pieces, mm -hmm. Jack Nicholson and mm -hmm. Karen Black, and the, the sort of anti-hero stuff. And unfortunately, uh, now that 50 years have passed by, those films are being treated as if they're templates for living, which is scary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I want to show you one of the uh, first clips that one we're going to see here. And um, it's just, an, it's supposed to be something innocent, like a neighbor just introducing herself to the new people that has moved into the neighborhood, right? But uh, no. <laughs>
looks good as she looks, Ted. Welcome to horny suburbia. She cooks. That was the shortest dog looks. walk. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I, it's it's kind of silly, um, a little bit. Um, I like it's. It definitely gives off the vibe of. Um, you know, like, like I found it interesting, like, oh, you should go talk to my wife. And she's like, no, that's okay. I'll just talk to you, you know? And that was a little weird. Cause if you're going to like introduce yourself to your neighbors, you're usually like, this is my partner. Like, you know, <laughs> like, you know, and, and want to get the neighbors to meet, you know, also like, oh, I would love to meet your wife or whatever, you know, but which sets up the sort of dynamic. It's like, well, that's gonna lead to something later. That's kind of you know because you know movies. So, but but it's sort of like that idea of um, we're kind of is, is establishing it's about the woman being interested in the men, not about the other woman in the you know even you know getting to know your neighbors or a dynamic. You know, is that how normal people behave? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and also um, it's just kind of weird you know that the way that she was talking to him like she was talking to him but not really like i don't know and um, anyway and let's see what else this has for us Yeah, like, okay. Um, this is, seems like it's just them settling into a new house, but she doesn't seem too happy about it. Well. Uh, it, it might be a matter of her, um, maybe, you know, I don't, this is just, I'm getting the, I'm just like, you know, titanning shit, but it could be that when they were, in, when they were living in the city, she might've had more mobility and now that, you know, they're kind of in the suburbs and she's supposed to like take on that, you know, housewife role, raising the kids, you know, that sort of thing. And she might not be like, this is what you wanted. You know, it's not really what I wanted. Yeah, it's yeah. the picture. It's the picture book uh, depiction of uh, late 60s, early 70s suburbia. Yeah. Yeah. Baby, you're my centerpiece. You know that the, yeah. that the old Lambert Hendricks and Rasta, pardon me, tune that uh, Joni Mitchell covered so mm -hmm. well and hit the hissing of summer lawns. It's just that suburban ennui. I mean, isn't there something better than this feeling that was around? Yeah. And well, let's see the next clip. <laughs> Stop born. Woo! <laughs> Woohoo! Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oops. Oh, look at the white gloves. Oh, Very yeah. Very sporty. Yeah. yeah. That tan suit. Oh, yep. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> tan suit and a brown tie. <laughs> Can't so land like oatmeal. Thank you. 
notice that all the men are the professionals here and yeah. all the wives stay at home. It, it, it just, it didn't... Yeah, I know, I know. Exactly. Yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, only the people with important things to do. <laughs> well, because, you know, you have a penis. <laughs> so oh. that makes you naturally better at those things. Duh. <laughs> Offering yes. offering yes. facts, not in evidence, right? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and like she, like she just seems annoyed that she's like that. That's like the she's like okay, yeah. And like, did they ask you? And you know, like, like yeah. I would be, I would be annoyed if my husband was like, oh, you know, all the pointer <clears throat> people, all the men have this job and this job, but like women, you know, they get to stay home. <laughs> And yeah, clean and take care of the you know the offspring. I don't do that. I have important things to do. <laughs> I do hope we get to see the ladies auxiliary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you know, now that you say it like that, Helen, that they have the important things to do. Yeah. A lot of trad wives that keep saying that. Oh, um, you know. The housewife work is very important. Uh, that's why it's uh, assigned it to us because um, that's the most important job. Uh, but suddenly, it doesn't seem like that. <laughs> it is, but it's also uncompensated. Yes, exactly. That's the point. It, of course, it's important work. Of course, mm -hmm. it's important to to keep up a home, to take care of kids, and all of that stuff. But it's uncompensated. And, and when women, it, it, you know, still always has been, still is to this day. And uh, when a woman goes out into the workforce to get a job, et cetera, she's compensated at 80 percent, if that, of a, of a man's salary. Because after all, her proper place is doing that other uncompensated work. And we should be yeah. happy, you know, like not being able to be compensated because like as someone that raised children and I worked part time at because it was impossible to work and raise kids on one like raise kids on one income. Like mm -hmm. it was impossible. It, it is unless you're making like a boatload of cash, man. It is yeah. hard. And and I get like people want to have like, you know, this, you know, they're looking in that rose colored glasses, like space of the past of like, you know, Oh, mom was home and you know, dad went to work and everything was easy. It's like, it has never been easy. And it has never been a world that was that the, these people think exist because if you're going to live in that world, then it means that certain groups of people are cut out of getting any sort of mobility or upward move it, movement within society if you want to live in that world yeah and remember that this was on the cusp and 1975 mm. was on the cusp of when it was just barely still barely affordable that you know, a, a single job could provide you know the traditional uh breadwinner home homemaker divide was sustainable economically, depending on the kind of job you had. Because pay scales were different. Mm -hmm. Because be, it was, especially in well-to-do suburban Connecticut, which is basically the, the scene of the film. Uh -huh. uh, it's not really saying Connecticut, but it looks an, a hell of a lot like Connecticut and Stepford's Stanford, you know, yeah. It's like, where does Both Daddy go? It's the Rob Petrie work goes to, <laughs> goes to work in the city, et cetera, and so forth. And it's just so. This is kind of this is what people are looking back to as being ideal, but it wasn't ideal then, and it's damn near it. It is impossible now, as you said, unless you're unless the money is outrageously good. Exactly. And I, I remember that, uh, well, I was told that at that time in, in the US, it was when women were starting to work like um, different kinds of jobs. And also that uh, in the 70s was when they started to have uh, credit cards. Is that correct? 
1973 or was it five? 72 72 yeah you could get a credit card with that your husband right oh. yay <laughs> It's it's ridiculous. I mean, because if you think about it, it's only fifty years old. You know, that's not that long. It's mm -hmm. it's it's mind boggling when you think about it that it took that long for women to be able to get credit. You know, mm -hmm. it's and it's it's ridiculous because there was this idea that a woman couldn't handle things financially unless she had a man there to make sure she can handle things financially. You know, like we don't have two brain cells rubbed together. Like, oh, we can't give her access to money, you know, and a budget, you know, and let her, you know, be able to pay off things on her own. We can't have that, you know, because it was this idea also too that, you know, men were in control of money in the workforce and women were in control of the household. And we oh, have to keep those okay. things separate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see the next clip. Okay. Well, knowing uh, what I know now the, about that, uh, about the ending, uh, that is like, uh, that kind of explains a lot in there, you know? I like that, I have I like I haven't seen this version of it and the one from the 90s was played more of a dark comedy than like a horror okay. movie. So um so I, I have no context for what the ending is but okay. but my pers just from the interaction like he's he's trying to like uh, remind himself how much he loves his wife mm -hmm. and and like I love you he says repeatedly I love you I really love you you know like trying to reconcile the what the this initiation was about with the fact that oh I I can have this thing that I want and it might hurt her, but if I really, really love her, it will be okay. Like that's just my, you know, reading into things that mm. I, cause that I don't know what's happening. <laughs> it's just a vibe. <laughs> oh, I think you're muted, Stephanie. Stephanie, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, it's pretty much the vibe. That's, that's mm -hmm. pretty much what's going on here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, it seems that uh, he already knows uh, what he has to do, and and he's like, oh well, but I love her, so yeah, that's fine. Uh, let me see the next one. Okay. Uh, this is a kitchen scene that is that is creepy. Let's say why. I want those overalls. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, no, <laughs> I love those. <laughs>
Okay. Seems that um, Joanna just met somebody that seems to be bubbly and, you know, like to talk uh, really fast and friendly. Uh, and also, she and also thinks that the men's association is creepy. Because probably is <laughs> very creepy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's say. Uh, let me check. What is the next one? Twenty-nine. Okay. Uh, okay, I think that is um, drunk Carol. That will be the next scene. Oh, that yeah. sounds horrible. <laughs> Creeper. Ah. Fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that creep. Uh, it just make me make my skin crawl. Just the sound of this boy. Like, oh, I like to see women. <laughs> <laughs> I have no comment. I'm just grossed out. <laughs> 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 Thirty-nine. Okay, let's see. Okay, now we have another one. Um, I think it's this drunk Carol. Okay. What the fuck is she wearing? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Why does she look like a couch? Right. Yeah, exactly. She looks like a couch. Like, what are you wearing? <laughs> Whoops. What the? God, even Amish women have more fashion sense. Jesus Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it's so ugly. It's very distracting. Oops, she's glitching. <laughs> 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 is it club muted or is it just that the volume was low uh, I think that the volume was lower yeah but you can't So she can't drink in public? Okay. <laughs> okay, she's not able to drink because she will just repeat herself. Okay. Well, I also too, um, maybe someone's very sad and maybe using substances because you know they you know are dealing with some internal distress. Just saying. <laughs> Yeah, but um, I don't know. It sounded like strange, you know? 
Yeah, well, I mean, I have seen people high. I have seen people drunk. I have never seen somebody just repeating themselves <laughs> like that and the exam right. exact the same pitch and everything. <laughs> well, that's what well, that's what I'm wondering because like, you know, she's malfunctioning, you know, quote unquote. But also too, like she's drinking a lot so that also if we're going to, you know, um again, I'm analyzing um, mm -hmm. that it's a it's a also something in her psyche is saying something is wrong and maybe drinking to cope with that. But the part of her brain that's um, programmed, you know, will just keep repeating themselves, you know. So mm -hmm. you know, okay. but because like I, like I could I'm reading this in like two different minds, you know, mm -hmm. of of the behavior, what she's doing because if she was always perfect, you know, and, and like she would have like one or two drinks, you know, still st stay within that, you know, brainwashing framework and then, you know, and be fine, you know, but it seems like maybe the alcohol is, you know, like, you know, she got, I think she's got some self going stuff going on in her subconscious, you know, I don't know. Like I said, you know, I'm just analyzing. <laughs> yeah. She just stuck. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that the yeah. whole yeah. thing like is that. that's yeah. stuck in this stuck in this vision of suburban bliss. That's oh, very yeah. blissful. <laughs> yeah, sound like uh, okay. <laughs> Let's see. Um, let me see. Uh, drunk Carol. Oh, I have another one. Here comes the chatbots. Baking. Mm. Baking. Baking. <laughs> you see that all of them use the same apron with ruffles? Yeah, it, it, it tends to be a theme. <laughs> what is that? Go out? <laughs> I'm out now? No, okay. <laughs> I, I like her. her. I love her. <laughs> I want her to be my spirit animal. Yeah. <laughs> She's great. She's not home. Whoa. Oh. Mm. What is oh, happening? Oh, sexy <laughs> Chick to ching. Brown chicken, brown cow. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh. oh. She, she was busy, but not, the, the husband is not supposed to be working. <laughs> At that time, yeah, it's probably the ah. weekend. Okay. He's not doing the lawn. Let's, or at least he's not doing her lawn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then let's see if I get the next one. Meeting the Stepford wives, or are they traditional wives? Okay. Um, oh, I think this this is the appropriate one. Then there here comes the dread bots. Uh, Fifty forty three. The German Virgos. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ascalon was responding to a subtitle that said German uh. Virgos, and I just started giggling. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Anything. 
sex, money, or marriages? Anything at all? Why do they look like their head is empty? <laughs> I don't have my own opinions. <laughs> One of them started to talking about the real feelings and relationship and everything, and then just oh no! But you know, mm -hmm. cooking <laughs> and getting your floor to shine. <laughs> what is that? And easy on, you know. What I mean, easy on. <laughs> I mean, I did get very excited that I I was able to buy a wet vac. Like I'll own it. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I was so excited about like you know getting a household appliance, but. Do I make that a, a general like conversation with my friends? No, <laughs> it's weird. It's very weird. Ah, but, here we go. Travel. Uh -oh. Well, um, this one is a TikToker. She is fairly popular, and she has a, a really big follow. She doesn't have kids yet so she is like oh i don't get it i don't get why women will not just stay at home and frolic in the fields with pretty dresses because that's what every housewife does i guess <laughs> as a woman who prefers to take a traditional or, or ultra ultra traditional role in a marriage including the beliefs that women's places in the home. Oh, okay, honey. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good for you. But I mean, the, to each his own, as far as I'm concerned, you go ahead. You go yeah, ahead. Just like, don't try to tell everybody else that you're, like, you're you somehow a fucking a failure. <laughs> like college is a problem. Here's why. I, I'm like, it, it, like I, if you want to yeah. stay home and take care of your house and raise your kids and be a stay at home parent, mm -hmm. I'm not going to poo poo on that. I, but it should be a choice. Is not and is and uh, also you should still be an equal in your relationship. <laughs> yeah, and you know that's the complaint that she mainly made on her account that oh everybody is just attacking me because I want the traditional values. No, no, no. <laughs> everybody is telling you that you are wrong for telling everybody that college is a problem. But because you have a large following. And also it's very telling that if you see the one of the squares, the big one, where she posted everything mostly on her chest. <laughs> but if you I mean, know she has the frilly apron. I'm sorry. Yeah, she's got yeah. Yeah, all right. That's, that's, that's good. <laughs> she tried different things before becoming a trad wife. And it seemed that she failed in everything. But well, and that's like I don't know if it's like she she's very attractive, but like mm -hmm. okay, so but even her presentation is very um 
like made up like she her hair you know she's you know she obviously you know bleaches her hair you know mm -hmm. she had her her makeup is extra expertly applied i'm sure she's using certain lighting and filters to make her look this way she mm -hmm. wears form-fitting clothing even though it's traditional you're still seeing her shape in the girl like girls you have a rocking body i'm not gonna poo poo you're very pretty but it, <laughs> but but because there's this but that is attracted to the male part of the audience that she wants and also to the younger woman that she's trying to appeal to it's like you can look like me and still stay home and take care of like do you think like when she's like vacuuming you know for like the 10th time during the day that she looks like this when hmm. she's not on camera i doubt oh. it <laughs> i don't even think that she vacuums or do anything no i know I, i'm sure she, I'm, I'm i i bet she has people that help her vacuum <laughs> well yeah. as as long as she's pretty for right. hubby when hubby comes home and meets him at the door wrapped in saran wrap and ready to go then everything's perfectly cool i mean she can she might not be altogether traditional all the way if you know what i mean mm -hmm. She might, she might have a few tricks up her sleeve. We don't she know. Might, we can't really. She does butt stuff. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but and like I was saying, like, look at the what he says. I tried fitness model, and I had to cut that off. So it yeah. means to fail on that one, right? I I've moved to Las Vegas to create my reality TV show with my family, and didn't work out. I wonder if she leaves the hat on, though. That's my question. Wow. I, I, I went to college to become a meteorologist, but I dropped out. Oh, that's on you, girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah did she wanted to be a weather girl, really? <laughs> well, now, well, I think now they expect, you know, people that do meteorology to understand the science. You're not, you can't just be a weather girl. Like, you actually have to know weather science <laughs> she was like but i'm pretty like shouldn't you just let me go on the news and be like look it's going to rain today here's a map <laughs> like, yeah you know and uh, she says attempted a low to be an pressure actress. system yeah <laughs> I attempted to be an actress but it wasn't for me so she tried a lot of things before being a housewife, I wonder well, why. Maybe she, maybe she's not a good actress. Kat's got a good point in the chat here. Every job she picked was for people to look at her. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good point. Exactly. Uh, let me see the the comment. Uh, yeah. Yep. It's almost like her value was put on her looks, not on you know, not like. And, and again, I'm not, and, I, I think you have every right if your looks are going to help you work because everybody got to hustle. I get it. Mm -hmm. But if you're, but if you think that's the only part of yourself that has any value, if you don't, if you're not in trying to be a curious, educated, you know, um, thinking, you know, like, you know, the world is very wide and has a bunch of things you can learn about and how do you, and, you know, become introspective and, you know about yourself and who you are as a person outside of just the outward appearance like and it's it's not going to work out for you you drop you dropped out of college going to meteorology because you probably had to study fucking science <laughs> and yeah. and that's the traditional <laughs> bit you know mm -hmm. your assets are your assets yes. you know right. i mean it's right. it, you're just <laughs> it, it's just uh, it, this is the weird thing about traditional values it, that's buying into the idea that a man has his strength and a woman has her beauty and that devalues both men and women in terms of their being whole human beings it's because event like she's probably I'm, I'm i guess like in her late 20s early 30s eventually her looks will fade age will catch up with you girl i'm just gonna tell you it's gonna happen listen honey <laughs> like it's gonna happen just nah you're wrong now and I, look I'm at this like, look oh. at this girl she's <laughs> yeah. got it but like i know it's like it's, it's gonna happen sorry everybody spoiler alert you're gonna age <laughs> to let everybody know yeah. and and then what do you do? Because if you're relying on it's, being an attractive person to give you any sort of mobility, 
you know, unless you got, you know, a team and she might, you know, she might be one of those people that has the team and she'll, you know, get all the work done, which fine, but it's, it's, it's not, not going to make her happy. It's not going to make her it's happy. Not, it's not half of a stretch yep. from the pinch and the whoop to the bosoms that droop and go dry. Right. <laughs> In the meanwhile, right? <laughs> there are miles to be kissed before miles to be fed. And there's many a tryst and there's many a bed. There's a lot, I'll admit, but I'll not have been dead when I die. And this is the problem. <laughs> You know, you're relying on all of that stuff. It's just really and and, and I if she hasn't had kids yet, girl, <laughs> yeah, yeah. her body's gonna change. <laughs> and also, they they never mention uh, these chat wives and TikTok. They never mention that what they're doing is actually a career. Being a TikToker is is a job. It's not. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, it's not just like oh, I'm making making bread. No. No, is you have to uh, follow certain um, types of content, and she has to upload and have uh, have it edited, and she's making money out of it. Yeah, it's 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 amazing because, and that, like we talked about this before about how mm -hmm. there there's you know I like oh I have a t you know I'm 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 on TikTok because I'm going to show people how to be traditional. Even yeah. though, uh, and I don't know if she has sponsors, you know, um, but assuming that she's making a decent amount of money and she, she has a good following, you know, she might have a couple sponsors here or there. But still, like, it's all about get being an influencer, getting clicks, getting people to share your videos, you know, every, we all understand how this works. And, but at the same time, but she, uh, the other side of her mouth, she's telling women not to like not to have careers to not go to college should not better i'm like pick a fucking lane girl pick a lane because <laughs> what you're doing is a job <laughs> yeah maybe budweiser will send her a six pack of beer and she'll I know, and get even <laughs> more famous <laughs> holy moses <laughs> like, it's just so silly yeah <laughs> okay let's see the next scene is uh, says here pharmacy scene okay I love that hat. <laughs> That's Ruth Gordon. Again, this is just silly because <laughs> like it's so because they're they're there's so fucking women out there like you know trad wives they're like you know um the reformed wife and you know fuck that woman <laughs> like the transformed wife sorry like it's like these these people out there they're like you need to do 
follow a recipe, you know, like, you know, you have to be at home and you got to um, have a little crotch goblins and then you got to like take care of the house and your husband has dominion over you and blah, 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 blah. And what if, and I, again, if you want to do that, I'm not going to, that is a choice. And I think you should be able to do that. It's a choice, but some people don't want to do it. <laughs> And that's okay too. And you can't get mad at someone and get, and, and like, and also like villainize them because, oh, you know what? I want to go to college. I don't want to have kids. You know, I don't want to get married. Like it, it's all about a choice. And I, and I think it, it is kind of a form of uh, gaslighting yourself and brainwashing that you are going to try to conform and go back to the 1950s, which also I would like to point out was also a fever dream. <laughs> like everybody yeah. thinks that it was like, you know, rose colored glasses. And I'm like, no, because if you talk to people that are from that time, they had issues or there, there was a lot of problems going on at that time. But people tend to look things through like media you know, things that made us feel good rather than the reality of it. And it's like, we're, I'm like, we are progressing. We're, we can't, people don't want to go back. Even people that claim to be like trad wives, they are doing their, they have careers. They're making money going online and spouting this bullshit. And again, they talk out two sides of their mouths and it's like, no, 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 no. Like pick a lane. <laughs> Like you can they really don't this, but on the others, on the other hand, but like, don't be hypocritical about it. Anyway, I'm sorry. Seth, they, that was a ranch. <laughs> they, they really don't want to go back to the 1950s or right. the 1960s. They want to go back to the 1750s. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, and do they really want to go back to the 1950s? I imagine that if you asked uh, a MAGA sort, would well, would you like to go back to the 1950s when the mar mar top marginal tax rate was 90 percent? When you want to do that? when <laughs> yeah. yeah, you really want to do that? Do you really want to go back or or a trad wife? Do you really want to go back to the 1960s when you couldn't get a car on your own? Where, when you couldn't get when you when you couldn't when you couldn't do anything without the signature of a responsible male adult, where marital yeah. rape wasn't a thing. <laughs> oh yeah. Do you really want to do that? I mean, yeah. it, it's it's a it's it's a place of imagination. Yeah. That it, well. you know you're making up a story that nobody could play satisfactorily even then, and you're play acting at it now. But you're not playing with the same set of circumstances in today's world okay. as your as as the world you've constructed out of your imagination of this okay. ideal time when you were treated like a princess. It, it, it's it's it, it was it was a myth then and it's a myth now. And you're creating this myth for other people to pay to see you do on TikTok. Like I like I was on Facebook today and there there was a little car cartoon by um uh it was a um old Looney Tunes cartoon of like a traditional housewife and her husband the husband comes home and asks her did you deposit these checks and she says no I didn't have time he's like what did you do with your time all day and it goes through the whole day of this woman like you know having to run this air and run that air and, you know, take care of the house, you know, making fun of the fact that her husband got her a vacuum cleaner for their, you know, for their anniversary, like all these, um, I like this idea that just because you're home doesn't mean you're not busy. And then at the end, she whacks him over the head with a, like a, a, a rolling pin, <laughs> which was great. Um, because it's, and I, and I get it from the nine. I think it was made in the, it, it definitely had a 1940s, 50s vibe to it. But even back then, women were like, you know what? You think that I'm just sitting on my butt all day, but I'm not. <laughs> like, I, I work all day. <laughs> and I have to go to the beauty parlor and look good for you. Because if I don't, if I look at hair out of place, you know, I'm not living up to some impossible standard that you set for me. You know, it was a criticism of even existing as a stay-at-home parent, you know, in that traditional wife wife role that it is work. 
And, and I think that now, like, and it's still the same thing, like these people that are Instagram, they have Instagrams and TikToks and, you know, have followers. It's, it's still the same thing, but you're trying to put a veneer of, I am traditional, you know, I'm the 1950s housewife, but I'm like, yeah, but you're not getting compensated. You're now getting compensated for that message because you need to make money. You're just pretending, you know, you're putting on the trad wife, you know, cosplay, but you're not actually having to deal with the financial, social consequences of actually following that lifestyle. Yeah, and it's also a question of wanting to make every other lifestyle less than and wanting to make every other lifestyle invisible, wanting to wanting to sequester uh, and wanting to sequester other lifestyles out of your frame of reference entirely. It, legally, <laughs> passing right. laws, you know, to, 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 to restrict other people's choices. I mean, I don't begrudge someone the freedom to doll themselves up, be a traditional housewife, do all of those things. If, no, if, I don't if that's if that floats your boat, fine, you go and do that. But I'm not going to make a law that says mm -hmm. <laughs> if because I, I I don't necessarily I think it's problematic, but I don't think that it's so problematic that I need to write my state legislature and say. These people are doing damage to the to the position of women by playing that game, whereas they are doing the exact opposite. They are going. They are taking their complaints to state legislatures and and you know and trying to enact laws that police other people's uh, ability to make the choices that make their lives possible to live. I just. I think it just comes, and we like we recognize this that it should be cho a choice. If you if yeah. you're able to doll yourself up in your, I don't know how you do it taking care of children because I I definitely had didn't have that time. I'd be like, oh my god, I get to shower today, yay! <laughs> like, like I can tell you, when my kids were very young, it was hard to just have five minutes to yourself. But I made that choice because I wanted children and it's okay. Like you, that's why you, you make that choice. It's like, I want kids, but to do that, I, I can't be selfish, which, you know, understandable. If you're able to doll yourself up and take care of kids, good for you. <laughs> but I mean, people tend to, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's fun to look nice and, and, and do the, the stuff and stay in shape and all this, yeah. all this other business. But to a certain degree, it's a question of: Do you have the privilege? Do you have the time? Do you have the money? Do you have the Do you have the social stand? Do you have all of these things to fall into place that makes your life so, so that you can sit there comfortably and play act at a particular role you've convinced yourself is a role that one must play in order to be, you know, in order to fit Matt Walsh's definition of a woman. Right. <laughs> Which, you know, you're sitting there trying to be Ben Shapiro's wife, poor dear. And, and I'm sorry if 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 there's no moisture involved. Well, and, and yeah. well, the thing <laughs> well, that, like, ben, so <laughs> I hate to say, it, but ben, ben is very proud of his wife being a doctor. He mentions it over and, and over, over and yeah. over again. She's not a traditional wife. She is a doctor. She has her own practice and they still raise their kids. And he spends about four to five hours every day taking care of his kids when he's done working, when she's still at her practice. Mm -hmm. But so you know, he, so he even the rhetoric that like he's spouting is that. bullshit. Yeah, he just likes to use that, like, yeah. uh, to say, like, oh, you know, I have some knowledge because I have a professional woman that can tell me how it is, and she says that you are wrong. <laughs> no? Right, which is, yeah, which is bonkers. <laughs> it's bonkers because I'm sitting there going, like, okay, I'm like, you can't claim that you want all these conservative things when you also support your wife having her own career. I'm proud of it. You know, it, it, it doesn't make any logical sense. And I'm sure like they, because Ben makes like a boatload of cash, they're able to have nannies and people that help take care of, 
take care of their kids, but he still goes home after he's done, you know, spouting out his conservative, like weirdo bullshit and still goes home and spends time with his kids every day. It's like, well, yeah. you can't have it both ways, man. Pick a, pick a lane, <laughs> pick a lane. <laughs> Yeah, and then and then there's that other idiot, uh, uh, Stephen Crowder guy, who, who oh, basically yeah. his his wife is the is the trad wife. And let me take the car. No, you know you really want that. I mean, that just yeah. doesn't seem like it's the coolest thing in the world. And and it's like I I hope she walks away with. A huge I think I think she divorced him. Now. Yeah, I think she did. Yeah. I think she did divorce him, and he was so mad about that that oh, they should not be allowed to divorce. Blah 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 blah. blah. Yeah, goddamn woman, yeah. and we want rights. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I don't want to be married to a butthead. <laughs> Weird. <Yeah. laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe the problem is you. <laughs> maybe that's the problem. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, anyway, sorry, we're, we've been ranting, but it's a, it's a thing because it's very silly. <laughs> yeah, let's see how uh, this is. Uh, the movie is evolving into the one yeah. of the characters is showing something. Um, Bobby change. Okay, let's see. Something and say, hey, that reminds me of an Ingles. Ingles was my maiden name. I guess I want to get into it. Thank you. Bobby. Christ, Sylvia Plath. It's true what they say in the ads. Oh, Joanna, they turned me loose in Burgos, and I went mad. At the plaza, some guy tried picking me up in the lobby. You know how long it's been since that happened? Of course, I did look terrific. Funny enough, the plaza now, so why are you wearing all that makeup? I mean, you never even used to clean your kitchen, much less wear makeup. Take a minute, Joanna. I was a joke. He works hard all the time. so much we just saw her just being bubbly and barging into people's houses and now ew. <laughs> well i i also like the comment like she feels like it's a choice like oh i i you know what like i was a joke before and it's like it, yeah. like it feels like a choice like and this is the thing and not just in this movie but for people like for trad mm -hmm. wives and it, it feels like this is what i really want and it might be I, you know, I can't get inside somebody else's brain, but there's a part of me that I'm like, is this what you want? Or is this what you truly want? Or were you told this is what you want? And, and like, where, where is that? Cause you can, and I think also too, for people that are in these, you know, evangelical, um, you know, um, traditional fundamental, fundamental spaces, that the only way you can have mobility is to play the game. Oh yeah, you know, it's, and I. Yeah, it's like what Karen Black just said in yeah. that scene. Yeah. Oh, it's gotten to you now. No. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's right. the, you know, it's a it's that conformity thing. It's like, uh, yeah, well, it's just sort of this is what we do here in Stepford. You mm -hmm. know, low taxes, fresh air. I mean, we all want that, you know. Like, Clean I'm the not, kitchen. I, but like, yeah, but you're in, like, how can, if you want to go enjoy clean, and there, there was, there were people in scenes like, I don't go out. So mm -hmm. if you have all these benefits, but you're still stuck inside, 
you know, cleaning the house and taking care of the kids and making sure that you're, you look good all the time and make sure your husband's happy and, you know, and you spread your legs for him. So, and it's not even about you anymore. It's about keeping up the image and making mm -hmm. sure that he's happy. That's not that it's slavery. That is not choice. That is, I'm going to follow the recipe, you know, because if to go against it, it's, is harder. <laughs> Exactly. Much harder. <laughs> and, you know, there is something that I saw at one point. I really don't remember that channel, but they were talking mostly about marketing and how marketing has been evolving in the U.S. since 1920s until today. One of the things that they mentioned is that uh, this image uh, of the uh, traditional housewife uh, making the husband happy and everything in the 50s, it really never existed. It was just a, like aesthetics they made up for to sell products like pots, pans, um, vacuum cleaners, washing machines. So it was mostly marketing. It was not the way the people used to live at that time. Like I always feel like um, I always I always want to like when people talk. I'm like, have you watched Mad Men? <laughs> Which is yeah. the whole thing, the 1950s, 60s culture going to the 70s of advertisers, advert, advertisers influence people in the way that the world, it ha, like selling the fantasy, not the reality of people's lives. You know, um, you know, um, the, like that was well, the point of that the, show. The ruffles <laughs> in, the, in the apron again. <laughs> mm -hmm. What is with the frilly aprons? <laughs> <laughs> Most people dress like they were they're wearing a couch <laughs> cover. What is going on? Now I'm just remembering Leave It to Beaver and June Cleaver. And, and I love Lucy, that. you know. Yeah, but Lucy stuff. was a rebel. Like Lucy, oh, yeah. yeah, like mm -hmm. she was she, like they like like Lucille Ball, like if one she's in an interracial marriage, Ooh. you know scandalous mm -hmm. and two like ricky would try to control her and she would keep her and ethel kept yeah. doing what they wanted yeah. and it was played for comedy but if you look if you really look at it it's like well she didn't want to be like the traditional housewife she wanted to go out and do things try things it didn't always work but she would keep going over and over and he so loved her he didn't like say you know he would try to keep her at home but it never worked it was the same with um bewitched and I dream of cheating, trying to put people, these, you know, women into boxes and they kept pushing against it going, no, you know what? I, I do have power, you know, I do have, it might, it was played for comedy, but it, that's the reality. Women didn't want to stay home, you know, or if they did, they would still push against those ideas, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that was important at that time. And because it, it has now led to where we are now and we still have more work to do, but it, it, we're not going to go back. I don't know why people think we are because <laughs> the majority of us yeah. are like, no, no, it's really, no. <laughs> it's really interesting that you brought up Bewitched. Yeah. And I Dream of Jeannie because both of those characters had to well, hide yeah. who they were. Right. And play to the trad wife role right in order for hubby to just appear to be you know we're just our your ordinary suburban couple and uh you know you don't have the witchy thing going on or anything like that but they had to hide who they were they had to they had to be different and fit in you know it was just like Oh, it's gotten to you now, like Karen Black just said. Uh -huh. yeah. it just, it, 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 that's where, the, I think that in the culture of the time, that's where some of the, uh, you could sort of see the ground shifting. Yeah. In terms of yep. in terms of the writing and the shows that became popular and stuff that uh -huh. there, there was, there was some stuff going on with that and lucy's an, another example i mean lucy lucille ball is responsible for star trek in case you didn't know yeah yes yeah, <laughs> yeah. yes yep um i want to read this article because i found this like kind of interesting regarding the trad wipes 
says, trad wife content is being adopted by the far right. Well, trad wives are already a niche subculture, and even a smaller fraction of them are using the trad wife content to spread more insidious ideas, says any Kelly, a journalist and researcher with ex expertise in anti-feminist and far-right digital cultures. Kelly describes the overlap between trad wives and the far-right movements as something of a Venn diagram. While, some of, uh, while there are some trad wives, including women of color, who simply hold conservative beliefs on the roles that men and women should occupy in relationships, she said that some of the alt-right use the trad way of aesthetics to recruit white women into a movement. Such influencers promote contempt for the modernity and feminism, as well as a desire of an idealized and implicitly coded white past. If you're a white influencer who is espousing these things, uh, like the one that we just saw, <laughs> and there is quite, uh, quite pleasing overlap with how many white supremacists configure gender politics because it coincides with lots of the right theories about what has gone wrong with the West. Uh, said Kelly, who also is a UK correspondent for the podcast QAnon Anonymous. Um, so uh, some trad wives, for example, use rhetoric that non-white traditionalist ideas such as replacement theory, one trad white influencers who goes by wife with a purpose came under fire in 2017 for repeating a reportedly issuing a white baby challenge in which she encouraged her followers to have as many white babies as her. Uh, and more recently, a popular uh, Trad wife and Instagram account posts a Time magazine cover featuring Prince Harry and his Meghan and his wife Meghan Markle, labeling them as beta male and a mother woman, respectively. This is your sign to repopulate. Accompany the accompanying test text read. Uh, so, and yeah, this is one of the things that. We're starting to see with those women that they're like, uh, yes, I want to go to the 50s because the 50s white was great for white people. And that was it. It wasn't, though. Yeah. <laughs> it was only 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 great insofar as you th as you insofar as you think that society is a zero sum game. Yeah, and she's not alone. Uh, like the one that we saw, uh, I think it's her name is Esme, uh, but she has um, another big influencer. It is. Uh, yeah. Women are numb. It should be a citrus at the farmer's. Like, listen, okay, like I love some cottage core, okay? <laughs> like, but I do. <laughs> like, like in the world that I would want to live in, I want to live in a nice little, like near, near my local farmer's market, living in a field, you know, um, dressing and have my home. Like I'm a, I'm a bog witch life goals. <laughs> okay. But I still, you can have, you can also work. You can have both. And also you're doing work. She's mm -hmm. doing work. This is work. Like her having to post and like write these little you know, um, you know, Instagram stories and that type of shit. She might have a writing team. We don't know. Um, she's very like, and, and it's the thing. And also to notice that a lot of the trad wives are traditionally beautiful. Like you're not going to see, you know, someone like me or, you know, I'm sorry, like, you know, base person of color, you're over, you're over 30. Um, you know, you're not in perfect shape. You're, or you're, you know, whatever you are, it's not, those people are not going to get the same sort of attention as a young blonde, you know, late, you know, 20 something that is do, playing this game. <laughs> Cause the ones that I usually see are like, you know, late twenties, early thirties, very mm -hmm. attractive. Um, also dye their hair, get their nails done, 
you know, what and also they don't have work. And I'm not, I'm not poo poo because I get my nails done. I love getting my hair and my nails done. I like to be pretty, but <laughs> I do it for myself because my husband doesn't care. <laughs> he he's always uh-huh. like, if it makes you happy, do it. But he goes, it's nice that you feel good because it gives you confidence, and I want to because I want you to be confident. But he he has no say in the game. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, none of those uh, have uh, already have children, so yeah. they don't really know exactly what that entails. <laughs> <laughs> like tsunami, as long as they're fully white presenting women, but the blondes get the extra North Nazi <laughs> buy points. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <good> one. Yeah. <laughs> I love a tsunami. That's <laughs> great. <laughs> And, 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 you know, like, I, why I'd like I should be in a sundress at the farmers market fl- frolicking. Sure, go ahead. You know, yeah, you can I, do that, and you can. I'm about you know, cottage core. I'm all for it. <laughs> you know, I'd like to swim in a clear blue stream where the water is icy cold, and go <laughs> town in a golden gown and have my fortune told. That that's fine. Go ahead. You yeah. can do it. But no. you can live whatever life you want to live. No. You can, but don't say that this is the only way to live. Because <laughs> not, not I like I want to I want to live in a cottage and be a bog witch. That's what I want to do, or a hobbit. I want to be a hobbit, everybody. <laughs> but life goals. Not everybody wants to be a hobbit, and that's okay. I'm not going to say you should. You know. Yeah. I mm. thought I'm going to wonder why you don't want to. It's great. <laughs> Okay, let's see the next uh, scene. Oh. Oh my God, that's too funny. <laughs> I'm from New England. I know these places. Me too. That's why I was like, I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> The, 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 the best thing about Truro is it's not far from Provincetown, to be honest. It's... <laughs> I'm getting so many flashbacks with these furnishings from my childhood. <laughs> what surprised me is that you come all this way to talk to me. You don't talk to me. Months. And I don't know what's going on. I 
I just know something's wrong and my time is coming. Okay. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Ugh, that's scary. <laughs> like, uh, she um, she seems that she's watching everything happening, and and it does sounds when you talk about it, it sounds crazy. You know, it sounds like, oh, why are you mad about them uh, wearing pretty dresses and cook, being cooking and cleaning all day? It, it, like that's, and I think that is, I, and I think though this kind of speaks to those of us that have moved away from those ideas when we, we're looking in going like, you know, if you're not analyzing it, you're like, well, they're just taking care of their husbands and they're cleaning their house and taking care of their kids. It's like, cool. Like, I think you should do those things, but, mm -hmm. but it's the only thing. They have no interests outside of that. You know, they don't have their own personalities. They don't have things that they are passionate about and curious about and want to engage in the world. You know, their role is to just do this one thing, you know, and this is a very fascist idea that there are certain roles for certain people that are supposed to do certain things. And if you don't, <laughs> you know, um, you're not playing the game like this. Like I was watching that scene and it gave me um, like get out vibes. Like you're supposed to, like this, um, this like, you know, you're supposed to be this way. And I'm also going to commodify your body and your um, and who you are as a person. Um, it has that kind of feeling um, like ghetto is very much, you know, a talking about people of color, but I, in the 1970s and granted it's a bunch of white women, and up, mm -hmm. upper mobility of society but even if you're you don't have a, a lot of money and even if you're a person of color if you're a woman you have felt this way you you're sitting around watching you know certain people in your community fall into certain roles and are and now we see with like the trad wipe trend trying to push it on other people and you're like but i i don't want to play the game i don't want to be in that role you know and and it's and the fear is that we're going to be forced back into it though. I, and even the people that think it's going to be better, even if, you know, um, if they identify as a woman or not, it will come up and bite them in the ass later because <laughs> it's not a good thing. It's not. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. You muted, honey. Okay. Let's see. Uh, the, uh, next scene. I was just going to uh, say that that hmm. uh, that uh, Karen Black's character's terror of not being her is right? quite spooky. Yeah, very. <laughs> okay, now uh, let's see the next scene that is about. Oh, that's interesting. Um, title. She hasn't changed from that apron <laughs> since the last time she saw her. Now I'm gonna now I'm gonna hate those aprons. 
Well, that's normal. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a thing. <laughs> girl, girl, leave. Girl. You need to leave, girl. Oh, go away. Go away. She's Run crazy. away. Don't drink the coffee. Oh yeah. Oh girl, you you broke her. You broke her. That's really good. Uh, that's very good um, camera work and acting. It's really, really good. That was, that was, I really like the way that was shot. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> yeah, it was really good and really scary. Yeah, like, that, oh, what is it's happening? Fucked <laughs> it's fucked yeah. up, man. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh no, like, oh. How to turn into a plastic person. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. <sighs> so it turns out then her friend was not even her friend. Oh, uh, okay. Let's see the next one that it says the association building. And this one wants another way around. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Hello, Joanna. Yeah. It's been a lot of worry you caused everybody. Poor Walter is very concerned. Uh, yeah. <laughs> First time I met you, I knew you were a good mother. Your mother quite safe. Having a lovely evening with Charmaine. She was thrilled to have you. You're not going to need that. It's, it's nothing like that at all. You've got quite the wrong idea. You've had the wrong idea all along. It's nothing like you imagine. It's just. Yes, it is. <laughs> You've got it like that. There's nothing to it. Just another stage. <laughs> Why? Because we can. Oh. Look. Look. Look at that. He's disgusting. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. I hope you get murder horns in your pee hole. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Yeah. 
Like, yeah, bust out, girl. <laughs> Can you just go in the way you can? <laughs> Time to <laughs> run. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. that's gross. That's so gross. <laughs> what? <laughs> so it, uh, what I, it bothers me is like they try to pretend that, um, you know, that only if you are perfect for them, that's the ideal. They don't have to do any, they don't have to be perfect. They can be whatever, just the women. Yeah. Your, your man wants a robot. Doesn't yeah. want a, doesn't want a human being. Wants a robot. Wants a plastic doll. That doesn't never want can... to see that sagging flesh. As the guy said, mm -hmm. just so bad. It, it's just because it, then I, like, and that, that's the thing is like, you're, you're not a person, you're an object. Mm -hmm. You know, and because if you if you do if you if you follow the recipe and you play the role, I don't have to care about you as a person. I don't have to think about you know support your hopes and your dreams and deal with like the you know all the negative aspects of just being a human being. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have to deal with that. You know, cook, clean, and you know have sex with me, and that is the only things that you should do. And um, also please um, ha have babies and my, so I can spread my sperm around. Good. Yay. You know, and, and I don't, and I think that like, it's very interesting to me because like on the trad wife trend, like I, I'm very curious about their partners because mm -hmm. is it, they, are are these traditional men and and are upholding the patriarchy or is it well yes but but not also really. like not really <laughs> you know because if she's if she's making money you know maybe he helps take care of the kids maybe he helps you know you know also helps with promotions and editing you know like like i'm very curious because they don't really talk about their husbands very much they talk about the bible they talk about, you know, what is a traditional wife, but it's, but they don't really talk about their husbands. It's very service level if they do it. I'm very curious what their husbands do behind the scenes. It's very, you know, just little, little things about like, what's your real life like? <laughs> mm -hmm. Cause if yeah. he's a traditional male, he wouldn't want her on Instagram. He wouldn't want her on TikTok. He wouldn't want her on YouTube, you know, going out and saying like, you know, every woman should be a traditional woman, you know, and, and not go to college and you always have to look good. And oh my God, like if you don't work out, then somehow you're, you don't have the same worth, blah, 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 blah. You know, like I am deeply curious of what their actual husbands think and believe. <laughs> It's true that we never hear from them. And uh, I think that um, some of them, they do are like, um, you know, like uh, people who are wealthy yeah. already. So it's not like he also has to do a like really hard job um, for over 10 hours and breaking back labor so yeah i yeah and i i like i do agree cat you know maybe he is you know showing showing her off you know it could be like a status thing you know because mm -hmm. you know some men have this idea that your woman your woman is a trophy not an actual person you know which is toxic and terrible but I'm just very curious of if you were going to sit these men down and have like a conversation with them. Like, what do you actually think about this? Do you think this is good? And are, also, are you, aren't you being kind of hypocritical? Um, but they know that they're, they're making money mm -hmm. <laughs> because these, these, like these women are making bank <laughs> and they, and also there's a lot of people in uh, that in corporations and people in churches that have the money to fund these women. You know, exactly. they, they, they do get money from churches and other like fundy conservative um, corporations yes. and where that money comes from like this, like they're not doing it completely on their own. 
Exactly. Yeah. And you know, the houses they are showing, those houses are not cheap. No. No. Those no. huge kitchens with appliances and ovens and whatever to make bread, that doesn't come cheap. It, it's oh. it's very yeah look yeah it, it it happens and we see it too <laughs> of yeah. like you know cis men praying their girlfriends or wives around like oh look at the hot thing I have you know um like and my husband's admitted like in the past he had that attitude when he was a young man you know uh like you if you didn't if you slept with someone that wasn't like conventionally attractive you would try to hide it you know um. You know, and, and said some disgusting things. And he goes, I realized at the time now that I was wrong, but the the influence of the culture that he was in, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I and I and it's still like it still exists, <laughs> you know, it hasn't yeah. gone away, unfortunately. Um, but I, it, I like it's very frustrating to me because also in this trad wife trend, it also kind of pushes women to be awful to each other. Because oh, yeah. if you're not That's, following, yeah. if you're not following the recipe and you don't look a certain way, you don't take on those ideas, mm -hmm. then that woman should be your enemy. That woman, you know, is, can have value and can be better at, at than you at something, you know, cause there's always going to be mm -hmm. some of this more prettier, more educated, you know, what, um, more funnier than yeah. you like pick a pick a trait there's always going to be someone that is more than you you know that's just but that's subjective <laughs> that's just a subjective ex experience but for but because the way the patriarchy is set up is that it not only puts women in this position as objects it also pits them against each other oh yeah <laughs> and i have seen also that trend uh, of becoming like a pick me girl um, right. like you have to crap in everybody's everybody else in order for you to feel better oh, right uh, before i forget uh, don't forget to check out our other shows on skeptic cabin tuesday we have the secular soapbox soapbox uh, thursday we have the sunny spot saturday the global atheist and women atheists on load and let's talk on sunday also, I wanted uh, to thank our patrons, uh, Eric Olson, Ryan, Denine Murphy, Dan D, Michael Weisman, Cindy Plaza, Sunny Shell, Aaron Colson, Phil Calderon, Amanda McLeod, and Logan Fisher. Thank you so much, patrons. Okay, now I think we can see the end in how uh, this horror ended up on the staff for wives. The music. Uh. The, the score is really good. Yeah, it's good. Oh, honey. Oh my God, I used to have one of those mirrors. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what the hell? <laughs> Oh. oh, nice. Oh, nice. That's cool with the black eyes. Very cool. Oh, I saw a nipple. <laughs> oh, oh, that's fucked. <laughs> Why are you holding the dog? Oh. The whispering. Yeah, the whispering like, is weird. They are not allowed to speak up. 
Right. I can barely hear them. <laughs> Why are you wearing that horrible hat there like inside the of the store? Yeah. <laughs> yes, Jason, you can wear a sun hat indoors. <laughs> <laughs> You couldn't get fully dressed up and show off your titties to go to the grocery store. <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh, oh she's not one of them. You're okay. <laughs> that was horrible. <laughs> that was that was uh, yes, but yes, car car. Kari, I agree. Boobs are amazing. But <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> like, um, I had to break myself out of like my, this is like something my mom kind of ingrained in me that I needed to have makeup on before I left the house, even if I was just going to run to the grocery store. Uh -huh. And that was indoctrinated into me. That was something that I had to break out of um, because she grew up in that 1950s, 60s culture where you always have to have your face on. And that was something that I had. To, and like my mom is, you know, and not a trad wife, we never was, but it was just like those little things that get ingrained in you, you know, as you're growing up as a woman that you have to be like, well, what does it matter if I have my makeup on or not? If I have to go to the grocery store and get eggs, <laughs> like, does it matter? <laughs> really? <laughs> You know, and I was just watching all these women around, like walk around the grocery store in sun hats and, you know, full um, makeup, and yeah, full makeup and hair. And I'm just like, I'm like, you're, I'm like, you're, you're buying beer. Like, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, that also shows um, that thing, the whispering. Yeah. It reminds me of something. I I I don't know if we should see it last, but uh, um, there was a senator that she was also kind of like that, like kind trying to look on that aesthetic and also doing the whispering. Um, let me see. It's an erasure. It's erasing, yeah. erasing the personality. Oh, entirely. Katie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, here we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is it. Uh -huh. This is the this is the baby voice trick too. Oh, it's so it's em so empathizing creepy. and it's gross. Yeah, yeah, and she does that the entire video. Like she's like, oh, okay, the Americans. Yeah, it was. I like I. We, me and my husband well, watched what's it live. Really, it's, what's really funny about this clip is that somebody did a like a pre pre clip camera check and she's talking yeah. normally, right? She's talking like a normal person and all of a sudden she gets into this, oh well, uh, we just want to stay in our kitchen. I'm talking to you from my kitchen, etc. And Jesus Christ, you just want to reach out I, and slap her. I do appreciate that a lot of conservative women on like the social media was like, oh my God, what like hated this, hated mm -hmm. this because they don't even want to go back to being in the kitchen and um, talking about like things that nobody's really worried about um, because you can be conservative, but also think like the crisis at the, at the board is bullshit. It's like, no, I just want to make sure that I have food on the table and I can make sure my kids get to school and have an education like mm -hmm. i feel somewhat economically safe like they're not but the stuff that she was bringing up women weren't 
particularly interested in, interested in, and even if the message that she was saying was true, they were criticizing her performance. Like they didn't mm -hmm. feel it was sincere. It didn't address the issues that they really cared about. So yeah. it, it backfired even on the conservatives. <laughs> Yeah, and it was just like, trying, oh, I am so sweet, and and I want to be so quiet now, like a little princess. <laughs> and then I'm like, and then I'm kind of laughing. I'm like, girl, I'm like, you're a senator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like what? <laughs> Why are you talking about you're a senator? <laughs> yeah, like, like, like you have power. What are you doing? <laughs> you don't. <Yeah. laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So uh, I think that we all want to make sure that we are not just uh, making fun of this just because we don't agree with them or uh, they are trying to be mean to the poor trad wives. <laughs> and But what we're trying to do is to raise awareness uh, that these uh, trends are not as innocent as they look. Uh, to me, it's like, uh, yeah, uh, you can choose to be at home uh, the entire day, mm, giving birth kid, uh, to kids year after year. That's not a problem for me. Uh, but the problem is that they have like a huge platform where they are saying to the young women, oh, this is what you are supposed to do. This is how do you have to be. And if, and then, if you so don't... You'll never be accepted. Mm -hmm. Right. And that, and that's more the, cause like if they were doing like a lifestyle sort of, um, blog, vlogs and blogs, and they were talking about like, you know, um, Hey, you know what? I have the privilege that I can stay home. This is the stuff that I do to like, you know, make sure my house is up kept and that do like makeup tutorials and that type of stuff. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't hate it so much. Um, not my thing. But, you know, I, but a lot of people do that type of content, but these women are basically saying, if you do not perform a certain way, you're not a real woman, you know, or you're not doing what you're supposed to do. And again, I, it's frustrating because they're talking up both sides of their mouths. And that's the thing that bothers me the most because they're being hypocr hypocrites. <laughs> that's the thing that bothers me yep. the most. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I have seen content like that, and they even go as far as saying, oh, well, if you had um, an, an epidural during labor, then you are not a real mom. I have, like, I have with both. What? I'm like, I'm what? sorry. This is another thing, like, because in the That's early 2000s, in the early 2000s, when I had my kids, it was basically, like, home births were becoming a thing again. And, mm -hmm. um, and like, I, I tried doing Lamaze and like, okay, yes, when you're just pregnant, fine. But then I had back labor and 20 hours of labor with my first child. Oh my God. I love an anesthesiologist. And then when I got pregnant with my son, I told my midwives, I was like, listen, I go, if he's not born uh, before his birthday, his due date. I want to go in, we're going to induce, and you're going to give me an epidural <laughs> because drugs are great. <laughs> like why? And I go, and also if something goes wrong, I'm in a hospital with all the medical professionals, yeah. <laughs> you know what they're doing and all the drugs are there and it's, and it's clean and sanitized and there's protocols that everybody follows. Yay. I think that's great. It was wonderful at the time. I don't understand, like, and I'm not, again, I'm not poo-pooing on if you want to have a home birth, like, and you don't want to have an epidural, I don't know why you would not want to, because labor sucks, but I'm not going to poo-poo, but again, it should always be an active choice, it's a choice, but if you start yeah. criticizing other people, because, like, did what I did, I was like, oh my god, give me all the drugs, and have my baby exactly. in a hospital, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. and then there are the assholes that say it's not biblical. Mm -hmm. You know, you're oh no, you're supposed to be in agony the entire time because that's Fuck the that. way God <laughs> planned it. Yeah, you. yeah, exactly. And uh, also the the type of um, women that said that they're also like very privileged because they have like a really big houses that they can sanitize and they can put a pool in it so they can give 
give birth and have doulas and whatever. Um, I would like to see one of those women do what um, a poor um, woman did in Oaxaca. That she was twenty, she was twenty hours away from the nearest hospital when she started suddenly to go on, uh, into labor, and the kid was rich, so there was no way for uh, that uh, that baby to be born. So, what she did is she grabbed a kitchen knife and she performed herself the um, C-section. Holy shit! And she took the kid out. Damn. How I? I really don't know. <laughs> and she's I'm, I'm like my, but like uh, all my like woman parts just went like. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> what? <laughs> well, I was listening to I like I was listening to NPR because I'm better than you, and um, <laughs> it's, it's, I, <laughs> and okay. someone was talking about that they are living in the Middle East right now. And, mm -hmm. um, and I think it, they were living on the Gaza Strip. They, um, th they went to labor and she did not want to go to the hospital mm -hmm. um, because so, but they had to. And she was literally waiting in the, in the waiting room for six hours in intense labor pain. Um, and the biggest thing that's happening right now in the Middle East is that women are getting hysterectomies because they don't have one blood, they don't have the staff, and they don't have the equipment to um, keep women from hemor hemorrhaging. So what they've been doing is that they've been giving women um, involuntary uh, hysterectomies to save their lives. Oh. And a lot of women don't want that obviously. And so the woman, so she was brought back into the um, operating, the operating room. Cause like the baby's coming, the baby's coming and her brother like was basically like, you have to get my sister back. Like, or, or she's going to have this baby on the floor. When she was brought back, um, the, the, the bed was still um, had a sheet on it where the previous woman had had a baby it was still bloody had, um, you know, some material on it that shouldn't be there. He had to ask them to strip the sheet off, clean it, and then put a fresh sheet on for her to give birth to her child. And she said that she lost a lot of blood. Luckily, she would, she did not get a hysterectomy because luckily someone had given blood mm -hmm. and she was able to get that health care. But there have been women over and over again that are living in this war torn situation where they don't get a choice. You know, you go if you start yeah. losing blood, that you'll get a hyster you'll get a hysterectomy to save your life. Even if and like you know, and you don't get to consent, you don't sign paperwork, anything like that. They just do it because they don't have any other choice. Yeah, you know, and then and then I see this crap over here where a woman is like, "Oh, you need to be, be a traditional woman and follow these certain rules and blah blah blah." And it's like it, it like it speaks so much to the the privilege mm -hmm. these white trad wives have that what's happening, even just giving birth and wanting to have a baby, like you that to save their lives, they're basically you know, giving them hysterectomies. And if they don't, the woman will die. And then the baby doesn't have a mom. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it just, it's very frustrating when I see like knowing that and that, and that juxtaposition of people saying like, well, you're, then you're not a real woman if you don't do this. Exactly. Like, fuck, yeah. like, fuck man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Th thank you, PB. Yes. Please donate your blood. Yes. <laughs> Well, okay. I think uh, that that is all the um, that we have for t today. I don't know if you, uh, Helen and Stephanie, want to add uh, final thoughts. Well, I, you know, it, that was scary. Yeah. <laughs> it's scary that that people want to transform themselves into something they're not for the sake of. I don't know what society but for the sake of somebody else, you know, or let alone allow themselves to be. I mean, obviously, this is sort of like a forced transformation into being a plastic simulacrum of a woman in in uh, that show. But I don't think anybody wants that, really. 
I don't think anybody really wants that. I think, um, yeah, for me, um, one, oh, hell no. But um, we, this is, you know, in the 1970s during when the women's movement was actually like starting to, you know, gain steam. Um, we are still dealing with this now, which you would think 50 years on, we wouldn't be dealing with this. But lo and behold, here we are. Yay for us. <laughs> so I'm just going to. Um, like I said, 22. That was how old I was. When that yeah. And out. and we're, and this movie is still relevant. It's been a long time. This movie. And like when I was in there, I'm like, oh, oh, my goodness. Like it's still relevant because there are women that have adopted this idea that the only way that they have value, the only way that they see themselves as worthy of some kind of recognition is through the lens of men and patriarchal men and which isn't a, but also are hypocritical it's very confusing Pick it. yeah <laughs> what's, yeah, what's a a lie little, and stick to it <laughs> yeah you know, what's a little interesting is that this this isn't where you know this was a horror film yes and it was where a lot of us were at the time which is to say which is to say rejecting that entire notion rejecting all of it you know it's like yo we all knew that was sort of an expectation but it was it was a it was a it was a horror film it's like no we can do much more than fit into that cookie cutter world and we were not fitting into that cookie cutter world which is why the film i think was made at the time it's uh -huh. just sort of uh nobody's really there anymore like i said at the outset this was a like a a, a satire a, a pastiche a mocking of that world yeah and that world is made a pushback you know it's 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 clung on the ideas of that world have clung on to the to the point where now people are looking back at it and saying oh this is actually a documentary which is which to me is crazy 50 years on it's just really mm -hmm. well like when i mean i think the line is like why because we can Exactly. Yeah. And exactly. that that's, 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 that's the why. thing is because they feel like they can. And and, and that why is why we're still having these fucking like, conversations, man. Yeah. <laughs> right. It, this that's the reason why Roe versus Wade was abolished. That's why they're they going after contraception. That's why they're going after IVF. Because they can. Yeah, and we're and you know people people my age are sitting here saying Jesus Christ we fought against we fought for all of these things and now they're disappearing before our eyes. If, if you're ever curious as to why I I, I I fear is because you think you've won something but you haven't. You know you we, you we've all got to keep our uh, keep our hand on the bow of justice to keep bending it you know the arc of the universe bends towards justice. it doesn't do it without people applying the pressure to keep it so and make it so because otherwise you know uh -huh. we're, we're going to see what just happened with uh, the Dobbs decision and we're going to see it happening more and more and more in all sorts of different ways you've got to keep on it yeah. Well, thank you so much to everybody who was in the audience, to everybody who keep commenting. And uh, please don't forget to give a like, subscribe, and also to look all the other shows. And have a wonderful evening. Take care. Bye-bye. I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way. Cause you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to grey As you fade away